Hi, in this uh, presentation I'll be talking about how to learn woodworking. So it's not so much the uh, learning the woodworking itself, but all the different approaches you can follow to be able to uh, learn woodworking and learn it correctly. You're either learning it through books, uh, videos, uh, classroom setting with qualified uh, woodworking educator instructors, or even YouTube videos. But I'll dive into each option you have so you can get a better understanding of how to learn it correctly and how to understand all the, uh, the safety requirements revolving around woodworking and how to avoid developing bad habits early on and instead developing good habits through uh, proper techniques which is critical in, in when you're learning woodworking fundamentals. So stay tuned and enjoy. I'm Norm Perlo from Wood Skills and I like to talk about a few woodworking books I've uh, written. My recent book is Quiet Woodworking in an Unquiet World. It talks about my movement to uh, hand tools from high tech to low tech, a woodworker's journey which chronicles my journey from my former high tech career to my uh, current furniture making career. Along with that I offer courses through woodskills.com. The courses range from a basic woodworking course right through the furniture design and a comprehensive design and making course. All books are available in both print and digital format. Hi, this is a departure from uh, my usual typical videos, but how to learn woodworking is the most important step when, uh, when starting out. You avoid uh, developing bad habits early on and it's critical to learn uh, the fundamentals correctly when, when you start so they're uh, sort of ingrained in you for your, uh, your future as a uh, woodworker. So let's define woodworking. Woodworking allows us to create both functional and decorative objects from wood. An example would be furniture, turned objects such as bowls, the cabinets uh, on stand, which is the main type of furniture I create, tables, console tables, coffee tables, end tables. Woodworking involves a range of skills and uh, techniques ranging from, uh, from joinery through wood turning and wood carving. So it depends on the path you, you choose uh, within the, uh, the realm of woodworking. You wish to create furniture, do wood turning, an example would be bowls, cups, that sort, of, that sort of thing, decorative objects, or wood carving. You can combine all three, of course. Woodworking projects range from, uh, from a basic simple birdhouse right through to a jewelry box, a more complex jewelry box, and uh, complex cabinets on stand. And this is what I, what I create. So how to start woodworking? So before I continue, I do want to mention I do offer a, uh, a Start Woodworking ebook and a Hand Tool Woodworking ebook, and uh, they're available in most of my courses. The Start Woodworking ebook is probably available in 90% of my, my online courses at woodskills.com, and this provides a, a basic understanding of the uh, of, uh, fundamentals that I've been discussing. Just thought I'd throw that in. <laughs> so, this is not a deep dive into uh, the actual learning of woodworking itself but more of a discussion on how best to learn it. And woodworking can be pursued as either a hobby or, a, uh, or professionally. I'm, a, I'm a considered a professional woodworker. I, I create furniture, market the furniture, sell the furniture. I'm also a woodworking educator and market my, uh, my educational material. It ranges from, uh, from books uh, right through to woodworking courses. You've seen in the introduction, a woodworker can be either self-taught or learned through classes or studies. So my advice is to take a class with a qualified instructor and this uh, form of learning is superior to others and you quickly learn what will take months if you, uh, if you take the self-taught approach. I've dealt with, I'd say, numerous uh, hundreds if not thousands of woodworkers over my 30-year woodworking career and I've seen the progression and I find that the uh, woodworking students that, that follow a structured program were so much further ahead than the self-taught. They just learn techniques and skills you cannot learn on your own. You need to be shown or demonstrated and explained. And I'll get into that. I'll elaborate further on this. Woodworking fundamentals are best grasped early on as so bad habits don't form. And it's very easy to, get, to develop bad habits. And I've seen many, many countless woodworkers that even after decades of woodworking, they still, they still <clears throat> demonstrate bad habits in woodworking. They were never taught correctly, essentially. I mean, they, they survived. In woodworking, they've uh, escaped injury over the years, but they, the techniques and the skills are, uh, are sort of lacking, and they, but, but they muddle through. So once fundamentals are learned, advanced techniques can be pursued. So you do need the fundamentals to be able to understand more advanced woodworking techniques. 
Of course, the correct tools and safety equipment should be part of your, uh, your woodworking journey. Safety is a priority when learning and uh, performing woodworking, and I can't stress this uh, more. I advocate safety, and I have a, a whole section of most of my woodworking courses on, on safety. How to, uh, how to keep your fingers from uh, spinning blades and bits is uh, very important in woodworking. If you, uh, if you work with machines, if you work with hand tools, it's just as critical to avoid cutting yourself on a blade, on a, on a plain iron, or a chisel. The technique of using a chisel to, to not hurt yourself is, uh, is best demonstrated by a professional. So too many woodworkers pay lip service to safety and set themselves up for possible injuries when they least expect it. Sometimes you get very confident in, uh, in, your, in what you assume your skills are and then only to have, uh, be bitten by the uh, <coughs> woodworking machine, a spinning blade or a rotating bit. Very easy, it happens in a, in a fraction of a second. Most woodworkers are familiar or uh, know somebody that's been hurt this way, so it's important to understand safety. Fortunately, I've never actually been hurt at woodworking in 30 years because I take all the precautions and this is why I advocate uh, safety. If, you, if you're new to woodworking, learn the fundamentals and more advanced techniques in a class, and I can't stress this more than, more than I, I am. If you're uh, starting to use a new piece of equipment, have a professional woodworker demonstrate how to use it, either through a class or have a mentor or some other means through a, through, a, through a video or a class, an online class. So basic woodworking skills are best demonstrated to a beginner. A demonstration includes an explanation of the different steps. And if, if you're like me, I like to, uh, I learn mostly from, from demonstration with, with an explanation of all the different steps. I really understand, I grasp the technique best in, uh, in that form of uh, education as opposed to just reading about it. And although I've learned a lot through reading and uh, numerous woodworking books over the years. So after first attempts at a technique, you, uh, you will pick up the technique and improve each time you perform it. I can attest to this. So once you've uh, initially learning and developing a skill to, to perform a technique is difficult, but for every passing iteration, every, every instance of you performing that, uh, that technique, you will get, and obviously you'll improve. It's frustrating at first for, for almost anything in woodworking, but uh, it's, a, it's not considered a race, it's a marathon. It's just an accumulation of skills and uh, techniques over the years. And, uh, and I, can, uh, I remember when I, when I began, I, uh, I had difficulty with certain techniques and I studied and studied and took classes and uh, studied programs, kept making programs and everything fell into place afterwards, so I can attest to this. Initially, uh, woodworking projects should be simple and designed around learning a technique or two. I always try to learn a new technique in every woodworking project and every subsequent woodworking project. As your skill set increases, it becomes easier to pick up on new techniques because you'll have uh, grasped the fundamentals of woodworking. So most woodworking skills are based on a, on a set of basic skills that are best learned through uh, through a structured program, a class, or a college program, or an online class. Woodworking is a craft you will enjoy over your lifetime. Learning the basics or fundamentals early will give you the confidence to go further with the craft. So having pursued a class or a, or a structured program will enable you to, uh, to enjoy woodworking much more than if you attempt to be self-taught in woodworking. Some people can, can be self-taught easily, or other people need that classroom uh, or online class or, uh, or live class, in-person class to be able to, to learn correctly. The woodworking fundamentals remain the same over time and this is what I enjoy most about woodworking that hardly anything ever changes, especially when you're working with hand tools. The, uh, we're still working with the same procedures, techniques that were developed uh, a century or two ago. This is what I enjoy. If you've watched any of my earlier videos, I talk about my former high-tech career and the rapid change, and that's what turned me away from high-tech. And I've embraced woodworking, especially with hand tools, because it's, uh, everything's at a slower pace and much more enjoyable. And uh, once you've learned something, you can carry it through your life. And nothing, hardly ever, anything ever changes when working with hand tools. So new machines are constantly introduced uh, in, to woodworking, but these are intended for mostly for production environments where time is money. Now you'll, uh, you'll be blasted by advertising on uh, all these 
and innovative machines to, to speed your time, uh, woodworking and uh, make the projects come along quicker, make, it, make your life easier woodworking, but for the most part they're production oriented machines for creating small batches of furniture and if you're the average woodworker you're creating a piece at a time you really don't need the sophisticated machines and it's best to uh, just have either basic machines work with hand tools or a combination of both also known as hybrid woodworking you can perform woodworking using strictly hand tools a combination of hand tools or uh, a combination of uh, low-cost machines and, uh, and hand tools or machines only I advocate using uh, hand tools with some machines for uh, pre-processing of wood and this is the most enjoyable form of woodworking I've found over the uh, three decades that I've been woodworking. You also need much less space when you're working with hand tools. You can see I've, I've got a workbench right here in front of me and I've got all my tools in the back and most of everything I need so I can actually perform all my woodworking in this smaller area. Machines take up space, although I do have machines. They originate from an earlier time when I, uh, when I did do machine, more machine woodworking, but I've slowly moved away from it and I, I hung on to some machines, the more critical ones. Something, something to keep in mind on the type of woodworking you, uh, you wish to pursue. So how to learn woodworking. Become familiar with the different types of woods and how to apply them in your woodworking projects. Once you're comfortable with the basics, the next logical step is to uh, challenge yourself with learning uh, basic furniture making and furniture design. And this, I advocate this because I teach furniture design and I'm a furniture maker. So I, I think most uh, woodworkers at some point want to create furniture. If you're not in the realm of, of wood turning or wood carving, furniture is uh, probably what we all want to create at one point, at one point either to market the furniture or for our own use. Mentoring with a professional woodworking or taking a class will allow you to work with safety in mind. And the, uh, I'll talk about briefly about woodworking processes. Of course, wood selection is, uh, is important to have the correct woods, the woods you need, the ideal woods for the project you're, uh, you're, you're, you're making. The cutting uh, is another process that's critical to woodworking, which involves cross cuts and rip cuts, angled miter cuts and curved, curved work. The joinery is uh, probably the, uh, the most important component of woodworking because this is what holds your project together in every case, uh, unless you're wood turning. Uh, how to connect pieces of uh, wood in a project is uh, recognized as joinery. So finishing is, uh, is the actual last step in the, uh, in the project and this finishing is uh, applying a uh, protective coating to a wood surface, which is important but the most important parts of woodworking are the wood prep, cutting the wood, sizing it, preparing it, and uh, the joinery involved in the project. And uh, once you're more uh, advanced in woodworking, you can actually design your own furniture because early on you probably work with a plan or work with, uh, with an existing plan. Creating a space to actually perform the woodworking is probably the basic, it's probably the most base, basic tenet of, uh, of being able to do woodworking. So create a small woodworking space in your uh, basement or garage as a uh, beginner woodworker, this is all you need to begin. As you grow, your requirements will change, of course. So it depends on what you want to pursue once you've experienced some woodworking. Your woodworking path might also change along with space requirements. What I'm trying to say is uh, if you opt to go the wood turning route, you will need much less space than if you're building furniture or wood, wood carving also for that matter. You'll need much less space. You can perform it all on a single workbench. A wood turner needs far less space than the furniture maker. Furniture making is probably the, where you need the most space and especially if you're creating large pieces of furniture. So when I talk about woodworking path, the, my path changed over the years. I was a former box maker if you watch my early videos and uh, I've progressed to furniture making. The box making is ideal for a smaller woodworking space and that's what, uh, what I had in my earlier workshops. I was limited in size, so I scaled my, uh, my projects, my, uh, my woodworking down to the size of the workshop. I wouldn't, was not able to create large pieces of furniture in the smaller workshops. It's as simple as that. So your woodworking path might, might change. And uh, once you've grasped the fundamentals and learned a little bit and you've, uh, you've been introduced to other woodworkers and other uh, woodworking uh, woodworking uh, pa paths or directions, you might opt to follow a different path. It happens all the time. 
we, we realize that we like a uh, different form of woodworking from the woodworking we're doing now. So uh, keep that in mind. So before I continue, I do want to mention I do offer a, uh, a Start Woodworking ebook and a Hand Tool Woodworking ebook, and uh, they're available in most of my courses. The Start Woodworking ebook is probably available in 90% of my, my online courses at woodskills.com, and this provides a, a basic understanding of the uh, of, uh, fundamentals that I've been discussing. Just thought I'd throw that in. <laughs> So understand the uh, lumber dimensions and, uh, and the species you intend to work with. Understand differences between hardwoods and uh, softwoods and where to apply each type of wood. An example of softwoods are pine, cedar, spruce and fir, readily available at most home centers or lumber suppliers. Hardwoods are uh, an example would be oak, walnut, maple, birch and cherry. Use pine. In your initial projects, pine is a very uh, is a soft wood and it's a very forgiving and inexpensive wood. Your first mistakes are better done in the cheaper woods, the more inexpensive woods, rather than the expensive harder woods, and they're also easier to work. You do need sharp tools, however, with uh, softer woods. Pine is readily available at home improvement centers. Once you're comfortable with joinery, upgrade to hardwoods from a wood, from a dedicated wood supplier. So I would start with pine for. If you're a complete novice to woodworking and have no experience, and uh, pine is a very good wood to, to begin. Learn to use uh, the necessary tools in woodworking. Tool purchases can be overwhelming if you don't understand tool quality or how to pick the correct tool. This is important because we're bombarded with uh, advertising for tools all the time. And even to this day, my interest is piqued with a new development in a tool, but I understand that the, the, the basic tools are, are more critical to woodworking, especially if you're starting out. So having uh, taken a class or, uh, or taught by a professional educator, a woodworking educator or a professional woodworker, you'll understand more about what tools you uh, actually do need as opposed to uh, what you would, new shiny objects in woodworking, is <laughs> what I call them. And of course, lately, We've been overwhelmed with, uh, with the amount of uh, new developments and, and tools, but it's most, most of the tools perform the same function. It's just some are more modern looking than the earlier versions. So purchase a minimum set of tools necessary for your first projects. If you're working with hand tools, it would be a set of chisels, a mallet, uh, a couple of hand planes. You can see a whole selection behind me. Purchase more tools as you progress as a woodworker and also depends on the path you've chosen. If you've gone the wood carving route, you need specialized wood carving tools. Wood turning, again, you'll need a lathe and everything goes along with that. I'm not, I don't do wood turning, so I don't really know much about it. But if you're doing furniture work and you're working with hand tools, you can get away with, again, a set of, uh, you can get away with a set of chisels, a mallet, hand planes, a good work, solid workbench, and some machinery to prepare the wood. So once your skills improve, you can more easily grasp how to use their uh, other tools. You also have a better understanding of the tools you need to purchase next. So once you've, uh, this is an important point because once you've worked with the tool, you'll understand if you want a better quality version of that same tool or this is the wrong, completely wrong tool for you and you want a better tool. So typical tools that you uh, should seek advice before purchasing are uh, are the smaller pieces of machinery such as table saws, routers, the planer, joiner, band saws. It's easy to make a mistake with that and buy the wrong size or wrong capacity. I've talked to numerous woodworkers over the years and they, their first purchase is usually the wrong tool. Or, uh, they're, they're limited in knowledge of what they should purchase and they're, uh, they've talked to a salesperson and either they've been sold too large a um, piece of machinery that doesn't even fit in their workshop or a too small piece of machinery that doesn't handle the capacity of uh, projects, the woodworking projects. So another question I get asked often is, can I, can I teach myself woodworking? So I often get asked uh, this, if someone can teach themselves woodworking, and my, my own woodworking education originated through a cabinet making program at a local uh, community college, and then I progressed to spe specialized furniture making and furniture design classes over the years. This was in the, uh, my own education was in the era of books and uh, no internet. If you did not take a class in that era, you would have to learn from a, from a book and maybe a 
We all remember VHS and uh, videotapes, and uh, you'd have to purchase the tape and watch it, which can get astronomically expensive over time. So today, with online education, including YouTube, you can theoretically go much further through uh, self-education. There's a caveat to that. It's like you can either, uh, again, through online education, you can either, either pursue a structured program or learn through uh, bits and pieces through YouTube and hoping that person teaching it understands there is a qualified person to be able to teach the subject and I would say 50 to 60 percent of the uh, YouTube woodworkers are just are just beginning woodworkers themselves and uh, they don't stress safety they, but they've just learned the technique and they're already teaching it they have no long-term experience or expertise with uh, with skills and individual techniques so you need to be careful of uh, who you're watching or listening to of course, I'm not in that group. <laughs> so this approach will, uh, being self-taught, self-taught approach will certainly take longer as there is no, no guidance. And the guidance you'll get through a, through a class or following a mentor, a woodworking mentor. YouTube knowledge can be hit and miss. Is the person teaching uh, in, a, in a YouTube video qualified and showing you the, the technique you're trying to learn? Do they have an extensive woodworking background and just, as I've just mentioned, this is critical. So you, can, you can watch maybe five to ten YouTube videos and you'll, you'll realize that there's so many different approaches to, uh, to, to pursuing a particular technique in woodworking and what is the correct technique, what is the correct approach, and that's the question. So you, uh, you have to base your YouTube learning, if you're learning from somebody on YouTube, on their qualifications as a woodworking educator their background and the amount of expertise they have. So, in answer to the question, yes, you can teach yourself, but it takes much longer. Ideally, you need to follow structured learning to learn woodworking correctly. So books, uh, videos, uh, internet, all combine to provide education, but what is lacking are the fundamentals and a structured approach to learning woodworking. Often safety procedures are uh, skipped in YouTube videos and this can be dangerous. Uh, you'll see this very often in YouTube videos. And I, I highlight the video, YouTube videos because for, uh, for the sake of filming, uh, all safety, uh, safety gear is removed from a machine typically because it covers up a uh, saw blade, for example. And this can be dangerous because if you're a novice woodworker and you're, you're following this person on, on learning a, a technique with a piece of machinery, or uh, even a hand tool, you will uh, assume that the safety gear is not important, like an overhead blade guard, that is splitters on a table saw, how to, uh, how to set up a band saw to keep your hand from, uh, from touching the blade, that sort of thing. So when learning from a professional instead, or from someone with a background of teaching, a woodworking educator, the basics and proper form are, uh, are highlighted and stressed before even before the person even attempts to teach you a technique. Safety is, uh, is also given a priority uh, as spinning blades and bits can maim or injure in a split second. And this is a very well-known fact. You could, it takes a fraction of a second before you know it. You can hurt yourself severely. A finger, a digit, a hand, an arm. Something to, to consider. Now, I'm not just saying this because I offer wood, woodworking courses online. I, uh, this is a more generic type of talk about how to learn woodworking in general. There are plenty of uh, college programs out there and uh, private schools that teach woodworking, so you can learn that way, or you can, uh, even the high schools uh, in your area, you can learn that way too. Again, I do, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I do offer some books on uh, woodworking, and I do offer that Start Woodworking book in most of my courses, and Hentel Woodworking, which introduces you to it the first uh, tools you should purchase and use and techniques on hand tools. I hope you've enjoyed this talk and uh, it's made you aware of uh, the criticality of learning uh, woodworking correctly and, and uh, developing good habits as opposed to bad habits early on and uh, enjoy your, uh, your woodworking journey.